Well, as we get ready for the green flag, the cars are out on the track going through their parade and pace laps. A little bit of hazy sunshine, the order of the day at, at Iowa Speedway. Let's get the specific conditions on pit road from Jake Query. Mark, thanks so much. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, race fans. And indeed, hazy is the key word. It is 85 degrees, the ambient temperature, the track temperature, 110 degrees here in Newton, Iowa, some 45 miles east on I-80 off of the state capitol. Des Moines and indeed it's been a sunny day all day long but now with a little bit of overcast that air has become just a little bit thicker 85 degrees the ambient temperature cars are single file as they start to come off of turn number four we see the pole center along with Patrick McKenna Beach row number two going to be an interesting start as they start to form up now behind the pace car as they make their way down the back straightaway. And we will go green the next time by the first of 50 laps. One more lap, one more pace lap. No, I think we're set to go, aren't we? Uh, maybe you're right. I They're believe this up. will yep. be the third time by, so they should be going green here in just a moment. Sage Karam and Patrick McKenna on the front row. Zach Veach, Rafael Abate in row two. Row three is Martin Scuncio and Mikhail Goichberg. The pace car pulls off. They are lined up beautifully, even two by two as they head to the start finish here at Iowa Speedway. And Sage Karam has the early jump, and it's a very slight one. Patrick McKenna is on his outside, and Zach Veach is trying to get down below, and he's going to clip Patrick McKenna. Veach is going to slide out towards the outside wall. He lost the nose wing he stays off the wall but we are still green at the moment the flag man has the yellow in his hand we should have some debris and we have another car that's slow in the back stretch and now we are under yellow sage karen will take the back of the line complete lap one we are under yellow with contact between zach beach who started third and patrick mckenna the nose cone to beach's car is off and another car as beach comes down the pit road missing his nose cone was slow around the back stretch and is uh, still on course at the moment. Now is limping towards the pit lane. So two cars involved in this. And Jake Query, what can you see? Zach Beach just brought his car in. They actually made him go right back out. They had the nose ready to put back on the car. When Zach Beach came in, he brought it in and then immediately they told him, I don't think they wanted him to lose that lap. He went back out. They're gonna have to wait and put that nose back on the car, guys. 41 machine of Brian Bellardi is uh, the Liberty Motorsports stable from Grafton, Wisconsin, is making his way slowly down the pit road. Uh, that car obviously under power. Didn't really see any noticeable damage. Uh, who knows? Uh, you know, he he may have caught a piece of that nose cone as he made his made his way through uh, turns one and two. But uh, a, a disjointed beginning as Veach continues to make his way around the course as the crew is prepared to slap that nose cone on the front of that race car. Oh, we see some suspension damage. Yep. The uh, left rear tire is askew, so that is significant damage for one of the national class contenders from Liberty Motorsports, Brian Bellardi from Wisconsin, uh, who has done some SCCA club racing in the Formula Continental ranks, winning a national division title and finishing on the podium at the national championship runoffs. He is uh, unfortunately going to apparently be done here before he completes a lap here at Iowa Speedway. So McKenna makes his way down pit road as we speak, and uh, we'll see how long it takes to effect that change as he gets ready to come to the attention of his crew. Beach. Check that Veach is the one going to pit road. Uh, Jake Query, you're there. Veach has come down. Dave Papalars is taking off. He's the uh, chief mechanic there for Andretti Auto Sport. He's taking off that nose wing, and they're going to actually, I shouldn't say taking off. It was already off the car, but they are asphyxing the new one that they had set up, and they are getting ready to go green as Zach Veach is on pit road. Green flag waves and a big jump for Sage Karam, and we'll see if there's any kind of run by Martin Scuncio. He's going to try to get around Patrick McKenna to the outside, but he's not going to get it done, so they will begin to light up single file, and what a jump for Sage Karam. Already 10 car lengths in front of Patrick McKenna as they head down the back straight. They'll dial it up down the back straight away, and he'll go to the bottom of the racetrack. He has about a 10 car length advantage now as there are strong cars moving up to the outside in the rear of the field. We'll set the full field rundown for you. Karam, McKenna, Scuncio. Goikberg is on quite a run. He has moved himself up to third. Abate is in fifth now. Manser in sixth. And Barales in seventh. Let's, uh, with trouble on the race course. We've got a car spinning off of turn number two. It's Goichberg. Goichberg was making a run, trying to get up into the third position. He was uh, chasing down McKenna. 
uh, Escuncio, I should say. He was battling with Escuncio, and then he lost it, spun. I did not see if he made any kind of contact, but nope. the wall does not appear he and did. And the caution's not he's, out. He's back underway, getting around turn number three, but some uh, close quarters racing there on the back stretch. But we stay under green flag racing, completing lap number six of 50 here at Iowa Speedway. Jake? This day has come to a disappointing, very short end. Delivering motorsports.net machine, part of the 41 sits. Obviously, some rear suspension on the left side. Brian, take me through what happened. Yeah, we had a great start of the race. I was actually uh, going into turn one. I actually gained a few spots, and the uh, left rear axle just let go. So, was there contact, or was it just something where the car or something jumped on the car? There was no contact at all. Just mechanical failure. I just right at the bottom of the track. Had a great run, and just a mechanical failure. Sometimes, I guess, when it goes through learning throughout a race of the race like you have here in the USF 2000, sometimes learning is learning. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the case in racing. I mean, that's how it goes sometimes. But, uh, Liberty Sports guys did a great job this weekend. The USF 2000, Mazda, Tires, and fantastic series. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Uh, Brian Velarde, today is done. Look, Dan, you know those suspension failures, uh, boy, they could really cause the crew guys to scratch their heads because you know they pour over that stuff before they ever roll the car out on pit road, and, 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 and sometimes they just happen. It seems like in the eyes on IndyCar series, You'll have several, you know, over the course of a couple of races, and then you'll go a long time without a suspension failure. Yeah, and that's a good team, too. They've been sure they're thorough in checking that stuff out, but sometimes it is hard to spot. Um, a tough break for Brian. He's a good driver. Sage Karam is the leader, completing lap number 10 of 50 now. His advantage is a little more than a second on Patrick McKenna. Rafael Abate is running in third. Martin Scuncio is fourth. Tarek Manser is running in fifth position. Sixth place right now is Javier Barrales. Artie Rudemeyer, one of the national class contenders, is running in seventh. Another national class competitor, uh, J.R. Smart, is running in eighth place. Goitsberg is in ninth. He is a lap down at the moment. And then Zach Beach is three laps down. He's running in tenth. And then uh, Bellardi out. He is going to finish in eleventh. And Beach has an awfully fast race car. He's uh, picking off cars at will, making a fast way around this racetrack. But again, because of uh, that contact and losing the nose cone and having to come to pit road, uh, he finds himself in coming couple of laps down. So for Zach Beach, it's a learning experience now. His second points race. He's not going to be able to get a good finish, but can still uh, get a lot of learning done. And one thing he is going to have an opportunity to do, Mark, is pass cars. And as you said, he is picking them off one at a time, trying to get back on the lead lap or at least get past everybody else that's not going to contend for the win. Yeah, he just moved to the high side, to the bottom side, then back to the high side. And one thing that has to be frustrating for him is that uh, he's able to drive that car pretty much anywhere he needs to drive it on the racetrack. We'll watch him come off of turn number four right now doesn't take a real wide exit keeps it uh, pretty much to the bottom side of the racetrack as he uh, continues now with 13 laps complete on the 50 schedule here in the USF 2000 presented by Cooper Tires powered by Mazda here at Iowa Speedway. Beach by the way to clarify he is two laps down he's about two and a half laps down he is uh, working a lap number 12 while the leader Sage Karam just now finished lap number 14 his lead is now more than two seconds on Back to Kikena, another two seconds back to Rafael Abate, and then six seconds back to Martin Scuncio. That's the closest battle right now, with uh, Scuncio and Manser running in fairly close quarters. The CEO of the series, Dan Anderson, is with us here in the booth this afternoon. We're thrilled to have him with us. And uh, uh, can we overstate Patrick McKenna's day at O'Reilly Raceway Park? Uh, uh, I mean, the night before the 500. I mean, really never seen an oval race, seen an oval track. And to, just an impressive performance. It was, and uh, he commented to me yesterday that it was a great race to win with all of the hoopla around the Indy 500 being introduced on the stage uh, before driver introductions on Indy 500 day. He said if he's going to win a race, that was a great one to win. Very nice young man, very uh, very engaging. It takes more to have success than just the ability to go quick. Certainly that's where it starts. You have to be able to handle the race car. But in today's environment, you have to be a corporate spokesman. He seems like someone that can do that very well. He handles himself very well. He is the uh, young Irish driver of the year. I think what the award is that he won. And uh, a really terrific young man. I, I see great things for him coming up the ladder. And then you've got these two 15-year-olds with Andretti Autosport who have a nice link. So Karen uh, grew up across the street from Michael Andretti. So that's, that's a nice proximity for him. But obviously, he and Zach Beach have a lot of talent. 
Yeah, they do. And I'm, I'm watching his times. He is consistently running 24 second flat laps. And, uh, um, they've put together a good program there. McKenna's uh, holding on to him, but it um, could be interesting uh, to see what happens when tire wear starts playing into it. Jake Karam now completing lap number 19, running laps in the 24 second range. He's 2.7 seconds in front of Patrick McKenna. Uh, 4.3 seconds back, you'll find Rafael Abate running in third place. Now we see the fourth place car cross the line just now. Martin Scuncio is 13 seconds back. Tarek Manser running in fifth. Javier Barrales is in sixth. And then Mikhail Goichberg is running in the seventh position. And that's how many we have on the lead lap right now. Seven on the lead lap. So, Dan, give us an idea. We, you know, we talk about a lot uh, the dollars and cents involved in, in putting together an IZOD IndyCar Series team and, and what it typically takes to put together an effective Firestone Indy Lights program. Let's start with the uh, uh, USF 2000. Typically, uh, what, what are the cost parameters involved in putting a program together? Well, an annual budget runs, um, that depends on testing and uh, amount of staff, but we're, we're looking at teams that are running in the Uh, you move up to Star Mazda, and the budgets will run uh, 300000 to 400000 and then uh, Firestone Indy Lights is looking at six hundred to 800000 uh, sometimes more, but uh, it's, a, it's a proper progression. Racing's not cheap. I mean, let's, let's face it, that's the reality of it. But the kids need to learn how to raise sponsorship that's part of their training and uh, get themselves up the ladder. And uh, I would think, obviously, now that you have the tie-in with the IZOD Indy Car Series and the Firestone Indy Lights, uh, I would imagine your team owners, including yourself, have to feel like, that, 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 boy, that's a nice thing to be able to pitch to potential sponsors and financial support when you go in and talk about the business side of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sage Karam uh, not long ago ran the quickest lap of the race, 23.966 seconds. He's consistently ticking them off in the 24 range. And we have others in the 24 range and the 25 range as well. We're working on lap number 24 of 50, so nearly at the halfway point for Sage Karam. Just crossed the line, and now his lead is nearly four seconds on Patrick McKinnon. Sage Karam has... Uh, it, these cars are well sponsored. There are not very many blank side pods. Uh, the Michael Fuchs Foundation is uh, the car owner, I think, technically, of, of this Andretti Autosport team. Comfort Revolution, you see on the car. Bell Helmets, Alpine Stars, just some of those that are supporting Sage Karen. And let me point out, too, I'm watching the timing monitor here. Uh, Mikhail Boisberg has uh, spun and fallen to the back of the field and has worked his way back up to fifth. He's actually driving through the field and putting on a pretty good performance after that spin in the back straight. Tarek Manser from Aruba, Liberty Motorsports car, makes his way onto pit road, and it looks like, uh, just like that, his day is done. He is climbing out of the cockpit of that race car and uh, uh, at the end of the day, after 26 laps for Tarek Manser in the 14 machine, again, that's Liberty Motorsports. Jake Curry will catch up with him in just a couple of minutes. Goikberg is trying to stay on the lead lap. His advantage is about five to four car lengths. It is lessening uh, on the leader, Sage Karam, as Karam completes lap number 27 of 50. But Goikberg has pace, and for the moment, he is holding off Karam. But now Sage Karam is going to get a run heading down the back stretch. He's pulled up within a car length, and he's going to try to go around the outside and to turn number three. So Goichberg was trying to hang on, hoping for a yellow, and we see side-by-side -side racing up at the front, too. That's the 99 machine of Scuzio and the 29 machine of Greenemeyer, and quite frankly, uh, our, our the, the car of uh, Veach almost got caught up in that. Those two went side-by-side -side just about the time that he was ready to put a move on Scuzio, and uh, he really had to, to, to jerk the wheel hard to the right, was able to hold on to it to work his way around him. I mean, that, that number seven machine, it, it's a shame that what happened in the opening laps, he lost the nose cone and went a couple of laps down because that car is flat, stuck to the racetrack. He's able to drive it anywhere and everywhere, and it's a good thing there because uh, he almost ended up in the fence. And Scuncio and Greenemeyer were not racing for position. This was Scuncio running in fourth, putting another lap on Greenemeyer, who was running in seventh. Sage Karam now has put a lap on uh, Mikhail Goichberg. Uh, Goichberg still is running in the fifth position, but now is a lap down. 30 laps complete for Sage Karen. Rafael Abate has now gotten by Patrick McKenna for second place. He's about two seconds in front of McKenna. So Abate is the driver on the move right now. Let's see if he has anything for the leader, Sage Karen. 
They come off of turn number four. They're doing uh, similar lap times. And yeah. Abate is with the JDC Motorsports team, very solid team in both F2000 and Star Mazda. And they've recently added Thomas Knapp, a very renowned uh, engineer, to their program. And uh, Rafael was very quick yesterday in practice and obviously doing the job today. Sage Karam is the leader. We work on that 32 of 50. Let's head down to Pit Road with Jake Query. Derek Monster has gotten out of the machine. The Aruba.com, LibertyMotorsport.net. Part of the 14 has the rear cowling off. Derek, do you know exactly what happened? Uh, I don't know exactly what happened. I just noticed the temperature of my motor. Climbing, and climbing, and our time just dropped like we were going a second slow, like from one lap to the other. So Well, you never lost power itself. You just decided to, to kind of not push it, so to speak. Well, we did lost power. I mean, I felt that the, you know, we're running 24 and then lap afterwards. I wasn't sure if we would, but I decided to bring it in. What is your overall impression of running in the USF 2000 series and what it's done for you and what you hope it will do for you? We're just taking it one step at a time right now. We're taking it one race at a time, and uh, it's a great series. It's definitely really hard. It's really competitive. Really great drivers here. All right, Tarek Monster, best of luck to you. Thank you. All right, guys, Aruba.com is the sponsor for Tarek Monster. The FSCCA and SCCA, South Atlantic Road Race title winner. Certainly a lot of experience for Tarek Manser and uh, looks as though that uh, obviously he has a very, very, very bright future. We have a car that spun and is down below the yellow line. We are still under green and it is out of our view and it's out of the uh, view of the video as well. I'm going to guess this That's is the 18 the... machine that just popped there we up. Go. That's Javier Morales from Chile. And he is still under power and is trying to get the car refired. It was pit exit. There we go. It must be pit exit is where he's at on the inside. And he is rolling again. So that's going to allow us to stay green because of the location on the track. He was out of the racing line. And he will continue to run under green working on lap number 38 for the leader. Sage Karam is uh, more than five seconds ahead of Rafael Abate. Abate is just 19 years old. He is from Sao Paulo, Brazil. One of Many Brazilians trying to make their way up in open wheel racing in America. He now lives in Minneapolis, driving for JNC Motorsports. He's sixth in the championship, finished eighth on the earlier open at O'Reilly Raceway Park. This is the second of two opens this season, and the fourth of 12 races in the USF 2000, presented by Cooper Tires and powered by Mazda Championship. I know he's uh, 13 seconds behind, but uh, Boykberg with a tremendous run. I mean, the spin earlier the way he did and uh, to work his way back up to fourth. Gives you an idea. Boy, there's just Kevin. There's a couple of guys that you can point to. Certainly, uh, Beach is one. Bookworth another. Or, as guys who, who who may have had a little something for Sage Karam had they not had the misfortune in the opening couple of laps. Yeah, Beach's day was a story was written as far as contending in turn number two of the opening lap. Uh, he started third, tried to get a run on Patrick McKenna, made contact with McKenna, lost the nose cone to his car. And they can't change the nose cones quite as quick as they can on the eyes out IndyCar series machines. They still got it done pretty quickly, but in that time, lost a couple of laps. So he was running very competitive last time. The last one, 24.081. He's been running consistently in the low 24s. Sage Karam just turned off a quick one. In fact, the best time of the day, 23.9. And now better that with 23.891 on lap number 41 of 50. So Sage Karam is dialing it up, and he's working his way through traffic. On the back stretch, he goes to the outside. Now he goes to the inside of lap traffic. Well, it's nice to have one hooked up like that. Dan Anderson, the CEO of the USF 2000 series. And, and, and Dan, take for instance a second place driver, Abate, McKenna, Goikberg. Uh, if, if you're talking to those guys on the headsets, what do you tell them when they're faced with a car like Sage Karam, who's leading this race, who's so clearly checked out and has the field covered? Keep your head down, keep pushing. You can. It's a championship season. 12 races. And keep it going. 
Yeah, the important thing too, you know, to, to get lap time. There, there's no question. Get seat time. Get, get, get experience, especially in a place like this. Very, very valuable. Patrick McKenna, by the way, is second in the championship. He's 14 points behind Sage Karam, who won the doubleheader at St. Petersburg. He led every practice session there, started from the pole and led every lap. And then he finished second after starting on the pole at O'Reilly. I'm sorry, started second at O'Reilly Raceway Park, but he led the first 29 of the 50 laps. McKenna got by him on lap number 30. They had a nice duel for a little while. I'm looking at the lap times, and McKenna must have, his car must have gone away or something. He's, uh, he's running almost a second lap slower, and hanging on to the back of the lead lap, but Karam's coming around, so you may see Karam lapping all the way up to second place. Wow. And Sage Karam uh, now looks ahead at his teammate, Patrick Leach. Uh, Zach Leach is uh, about uh, a pretty good cushion, probably 25 car lengths in front of him. So Leach should be able to maintain this lap, and he's still a couple of laps down, uh, two and a half, yeah, near, nearly three laps down. Uh, the leader, Karam, is just about to now complete lap number 46. So four laps to go here at Iowa Speedway, the 50 lap USA 2000, presented by Cooper Towers and Cooper Towers by Mon. Well, after, again, uh, a couple of incidents in, in the first handful of laps, there's no question uh, these drivers have uh, settled into a pretty nice race pace, although we have a car with some issues off the exit of turn number four, bobbling a little bit. That's the number two machine of Patrick McKenna, and Dan, maybe those tires are just shot. Yeah, there's something going on there. Look, he's staying up high and keeping out of the way. Good courteous driving, but uh, clearly Patrick is having a struggle there and just got lapped. And he is way off the pace now. Let's see if he stays on the track or if he ducks down low and brings it in. And at this point, as long as the car is going to move, he's going to try to limp it around, stay out of the way, and try to maintain some type of position. And he is just crawling around the high line now as cars blow by him. He is completing lap number 47. The leader, Sage Karam, just completed lap number 48. And now Patrick McKenna is pulling down to the inside. So he's going to give it a rake. Uh, arrested, Sage Karam will cruise towards victory lane now. Will the yellow flag come out? We'll see. He's to the bottom of the racetrack. He's well below the yellow line. We've got uh, about a lap and a half to go here. Waiting on the white flag to come out. I think we're going to be able to stay green yep. because McKenna is out of the groove. He is at the exit of two on the low line. He is not in danger at this point, so... We look now at the checker flag shown for Sage Karam winning for the third time this season at Iowa Speedway, taking the USF 2000 event in a dominating start to finish performance. Yeah, he led by seven seconds over Abate, but after that, everyone else was lapped. Uh, very hooked up race car. Hats off to Abate, too. He hung with him as long as he could, and he wasn't that far back, but the, uh, clearly Sage in the class of the field. Uh, other than Sage Karam, I think the drive of the day has to go to Goikberg. I mean, to, to spin like he did and lose all of that momentum uh, and to pick his way back up through the field, and he ends up on the podium in third place. That's yeah. a great drive by him. So a pretty clean race here today. A lot of experience gained by these young drivers. And, Mark, a nice crowd filling in here. We've got a good, this is a good day. A lot of racing. We just had Firestone Indy Lights qualifying. We have uh, the, the Star Mazda race still to come. IZOT IndyCar Series qualifying. And, of course, the uh, Firestone Indy Lights race coming up this evening as well. Thanks to Dan Anderson, the CEO and owner, along with his brother John Anderson of USF 2000, providing insight. It was great to have him in sure. the booth. He's going to head down to Victory Lane where we will hear from Sage Karam coming up in just a moment. He's pulling in there now. Well, no question, Kevin, that uh, the last couple of years that we've been here at Iowa Speedway, uh, this is one of those places where, you know, people show up on Saturday, people show up on Sunday, and uh, they've rolled out the, the welcome mat for open wheel racing here at Iowa Speedway. Let's go downstairs. Jay Query. Landretti celebrates as he gives a congratulations to Sage Karam and one of those days, Michael, and I would anticipate, and maybe this is presumptuous of me, but whenever you have two young drivers and you're kind of trying to teach them along, sometimes you're going to have one that's going to have a great day and then somebody like Zach has some problems early on. Take me through kind of the highs and the lows of this race for you. Well, I mean, yeah, it was really disappointing for Zach because I really feel we would add a one-two. Uh, you know, I think McKenna just, uh, you know, came down on him and took his front wing off and actually he ended up ruining his race as well with his getting a flat left rear. So it was a shame. Uh, but that's part of, you know, these guys, they got to learn how to race here and, you know, they have to give each other room. And so, you know, that's just part of learning it. 
you guys have obviously, as a team with Andretti Autosport, we saw it with the extensive testing you did at Indianapolis, now with Sage and Victory Lane. You're committed to this, aren't you? Oh, for sure. I mean, if you're going to do it, you know, you're going to do it right. And, uh, you know, we have two really talented young kids here, and, uh, you know, I think they can go a long, long way. And, you know, now we should be in the lead in the championship with Sage and hopefully stretch it a little bit. So, you know, our goal is a championship. All right, congratulations, Michael Andretti. Thank you. All right, Michael Andretti, let's head over now and talk to Sage Karam as he gets the victory here. He led from the very beginning of this race, starting out on pole, and Sage Karam picking up the win. Sage, congratulations. Uh, thanks. I mean, it was a great race. Uh, really, just the car was hooked up, and all the all the efforts that these guys put into me. It's just uh, a great feeling to be in a uh, victory circle. How big a team win is this? And the fact that you talked about earlier, you guys had some areas where there were some question marks, and this Andretti Autosport team is not afraid to step in and help out. I mean, this is a big win. Uh, we proved we can do it on the ovals from last week. I mean, uh, we had a pretty good performance last uh, week at ORP, but. Uh, could have been better, so uh, this was definitely a right uh, step in the, dire in the right direction. All right, a weekend of domination. He was the fastest in practice and qualifying. He's the points leader. Sage Karam is the winner here at Iowa Speedway. All right, Jake Query, thank you very much. We'll give you a few minutes now to get ready for IZOD IndyCar Series qualifying coming up at the bottom of the hour, and congratulations again to Sage Karam as uh, he ends up in victory lane here at Iowa Speedway. And, Kevin, uh, obviously some problems for these drivers and a couple of incidents to, to start this race. But uh, but all in all, uh, I think if you're uh, Andretti Autosport, you have to feel awfully, awfully competent, awfully, awfully comfortable about the future of your program with the two young drivers that they've assembled here in the USF 2000 series. And that's one of the designs of the road to Indy is to allow not only drivers, but teams, mechanics, crew guys, PR people to uh, gain some needed experience. But you, you, as Randy Bernard states, the goal is to have the best drivers possible in the Eyes Out IndyCar series. But it would also be nice to cultivate some good American drivers as well. And that's what Michael Andretti has done. Three drivers in the Eyes Out IndyCar series, and he's got these two 15-year-old Americans, Zach Veach and Sage Karam, which showed very well here so far this season. And Karam with Patrick McKenna, the second in the championship, falling back to sixth. Karam is going to pick up even more and be in control of the championship right now as they head to the fifth of 12 races. And next up for them is uh, next week. They will be at New Jersey Motorsports Park in Millville, New Jersey, June 26th and 27th. Those races will be on HDNet along with the Star Mazda races. After that, they head to the Audubon Country Club in Joliet, Illinois. Still a races to come at Road America, too, before they finish up their season. Double headers the rest of the way. Well, Kevin, still plenty of uh, racing action here this afternoon and this evening at Iowa Speedway. Coming up at uh, 4.30 local time, 5.30 Eastern, we'll have IZOD IndyCar Series qualifying. Uh, then at 8.15 Eastern, it's the Star Mazda race here. And then at uh, 9.45 Eastern, it's the Firestone Indy Lights race as we get ready for the uh, avoidthestork.com. And uh, we're looking forward to, to all of the action here on IndyCar.com. Uh, and after the practice sessions today uh, for the ISOD IndyCar Series, uh, the usual notable suspects found their way to the top of the speed chart. Tony Kanan, P1, so something different other than a Penske or a Ganassi. The number 10 Ganassi car has won the last couple of years. Dario Franchitti won three years ago when he was still driving for Andretti Green Racing. So maybe this is the weekend that someone other than Penske or Ganassi wins an oval, and it's been two years since that happened. Will Power, Marco Andretti, Ryan Briscoe, Dario Franchini rounded out the top five of practice number two. So Mike King joins us to uh, anchor coverage of the Eyes Out IndyCar Series qualifying session. That's coming up in just a few minutes, Mark. So thanks to Rick Evans for all the technical support, and thanks to Chris Pollock for pushing the buttons and directing things. Great job by Jake Query down on Pit Road. Our thanks to Dan Anderson for joining us in the booth. And congratulations to Sage Karam. Winner of the USF 2000 race here at Iowa Speedway. Again, Mike King, all the game back at the bottom of the hour. For Kevin Lee, I'm Mark Jane saying so long from Iowa Speedway.